Welcome back to the College of Glycation, where we uncover the biochemical breakdowns that silently sabotage our health. I'm your host, Paul Reynolds. I'm a biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. And today we're describing a crucial and often overlooked battleground, the gut or the digestive system. Specifically, we're talking about the disruption of tight junctions in the intestinal epithelial cells by toxic advanced glycation end products, or TAGES. Again, those are the toxic ages that we've talked about. This episode is grounded primarily in a brand new 2025 peer-reviewed study that was conducted by a research team led by Dr. Takeda and his colleagues from the Nagoya City University in Japan. And they explored how TAGES wreak havoc on intestinal integrity by targeting the very proteins that keep our gut lining sealed nice and tight. But before we jump into that new publication, let's briefly revisit the concept of glycation so we're all foundationally prepared. Glycation, as we've talked about in the past, is a non-enzymatic process. This process is where sugars bind to proteins, lipids, and even our nucleic acids, like DNA. And the binding leads to the formation of advanced glycation end products, or ages. And these compounds accumulate over time and are major contributors to the chronic inflammation and tissue dysfunction that we associate with aging, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even types of neurodegeneration. But not all ages are created equal. Some are relatively benign, while others, like those derived from glyceraldehyde, what we call tages, toxic ages, are indeed highly toxic. Now let's bring the gut into the conversation. Your intestinal lining is just a single layer of epithelial cells. These are columnar cells, meaning they are more column-like than cube-like or flat. These are thick cells that are fortified by tight junctions. These are junctional complexes made of proteins between neighboring cells. And this specialized protein complex is often incorporating a protein called ZO1 or ZO1. It stands for zonula occludens protein number one. Those proteins plus many clodin proteins form a very nice consistent seal between neighboring cells. This seal ensures that the contents of your gut stay in the gut, not leaking in between the cells and gaining access to the bloodstream where they can trigger immune responses and rampant systemic inflammation. The Takeda study used a group of cells called CACO2 cells. This is a human epithelial colorectal cell line that mimics the intestinal barrier properties when cultured in the lab. When these cells were exposed to glyceraldehyde, or GA, that's a precursor for TAGES, something alarming happened. Cell viability dropped, so these cells did not survive as well. Intracellular TAGE levels rose, so again, these toxic ages accumulated. But most importantly, they found that tight junction integrity was significantly compromised. Let me break that down a bit further. Upon exposure of these intestinal cells to GA, or glyceraldehyde, there was a significant decrease in transepithelial electrical resistance. That's a measure which, in fact, is actually a proxy for how tight those tight junctions are. They also observed increased permeability to what's called lucifer yellow, a fluorescent dye that should not pass through an intact barrier. So screening for that dye very easily can show if that barrier is compromised. Together, those findings are a smoking gun. Tage formation inside cells 
were shown to disrupt the tight junctions that should maintain gut integrity. Now, loss of integrity is bad enough, but it does get worse. They next used immunofluorescence microscopy. That's where you use the microscope to evaluate a fluorescently tagged protein. You're basically trying to find where that protein is. And this immunofluorescent microscopy test revealed decreased expression of a key tight junctional protein family. Again, ZO1, zonula occludens 1, and a group of Claudins, primarily Claudin 7, were found to be less expressed in those cells that accumulate tages. They had less of those tight junctional proteins embedded in their plasma membranes between cells. The tages, therefore, are not just disrupting function, they're also altering the architecture of the gut wall at the molecular level. So what is it that causes this destruction? Well, this was also described in the research study. The study shows it that destruction is mediated by reactive oxygen species, or ROS. You may want to go back quite a few episodes in this College of Glycation. We talked about oxidative stress and ROS in a previous episode. Cells that were treated with glyceraldehyde had elevated ROS production, or reactive oxygen species abundance as well as increased expression of a protein called NADPH oxidase. Those genes controlled by NADPH um, domains like NOx1 and other proteins both are key players in the oxidative stress pathway. So how does this oxidative stress kill cells, you might be wondering. Interestingly, the study showed that glyceraldehyde-induced TAGE accumulation led primarily to necrosis. That's the aberrant, anomalous breakdown of tissue, not the regularly programmed breakdown we know as apoptosis. This is a very important discovery because apoptosis is a tidy, very controlled form of cell death. You might imagine it as a pruning effect of cells. Similar to pruning or weaning down the branches on an overgrown tree, you can prune cells via apoptosis in a highly controlled fashion. But necrosis, on the other hand, is messy. It is a process that spills cellular contents into surrounding tissue. Therefore, it highly promotes inflammation and potentially even some autoimmune responses. Very problematic. So if you're wondering why this matters, let's zoom out a bit and take a closer look at the big picture. An impaired gut barrier, sometimes called leaky gut, has been implicated in the progression of numerous chronic diseases. We're talking about inflammatory bowel disease type 2 diabetes, and even neuroinflammatory disorders. Ages, especially their toxic variety, TAGES, are elevated in patients which, with each of these conditions. Some might say that's a coincidence, but that's not likely. So let's reinforce these findings from the Takeda paper just published recently with some additional external evidence. First of all, let's look at a review that was published three years ago in 2022. This review appeared in the journal Cells by Twarda, Klappa, and colleagues, and they outlined the systemic effects of ages, emphasizing the role of RAGE, the receptor for ages, in chronic inflammation and tissue dysfunction. Highly supportive of these discoveries, that we see now in the gut specifically. Secondarily, Takeda and other colleagues, in this case 2017, demonstrated that intracellular tages cause hepatocyte cell death, or that's the cell death of liver cells. And they died via ROS-mediated pathways, a mechanism that's now been echoed freshly in intestinal cells. 
A third study also can be described. In the journal Metabolites 2022, the same team showed that there was similar cytotoxicity in cardiac fibroblasts. In this case, of course, the pattern is consistent. Tages formed inside the cell can be lethal. There was a fourth paper published in 2021 that supports this innovative discovery. In this case, Takino and co-workers provided compelling evidence that intracellular tages can disrupt the endothelial barrier integrity. That's the simple squamous lining of cells that you find throughout the cardiovascular system, the ones that line blood vessels. Again, they've implicated ROS and oxidative stress downstream of TAGE acquisition in disrupting those barriers. A fifth example was published just two years ago in 2023 by a group led by Dr. Morrissey in the journal Cells. They showed that high glucose-induced oxidative stress in KCO2 cells, the same cells we're talking about today, altered protective enzymes like paraoxinase 2. And what that does is further link glucose metabolism, again, upstream of glycation, to the integrity that we hope to maintain in the gut. A sixth example was published by Snelson and colleagues in the International Journal of Molecular Sciences in 2022. And in this study, they tied age-rage signaling to altered gut permeability in models of diabetes. So a very nice harbinger of this Takeda study that really show the impact of tages in gut maintenance. A seventh example is by Q et al. In 2017, this research team showed that dietary ages, these are the ones that we ingest when we partake of highly processed foods, lots of carbohydrates, etc. They found that these dietary ages increase colon permeability and they alter the microbiome composition in some rat models they looked at. These discoveries suggest that even exogenous ages pose a threat, in addition to those that we make within our body cells. A final example was maybe one published by Horowitz and colleagues in 2023. They provided a masterful overview of tight junction regulation and its disruption across many diseases, including those involving oxidative stress and cytokine signaling. Please make sure you check out the show notes for the references of each of these papers that support this Takeda publication we've been talking about. So where does this leave us? Well, the Takeda study, published out of a lab in the city of Nagoya, Japan, provides strong mechanistic evidence that TAGE accumulation disrupts gut integrity by compromising tight junctions through oxidative stress and necrotic cell death. This is not just an isolated cellular phenomenon. It's a piece of a much larger puzzle that links metabolic dysfunction, glycation, and what can be systemic diseases. If we understand that ages and particularly the toxic ones, tages, can erode the very foundation of our intestinal barrier, then preventing their formation becomes a critical therapeutic goal. That means managing blood sugar, minimizing fructose and glucose spikes or overload, and perhaps even considering age-inhibiting compounds like aminoguanidine. We've mentioned that in several episodes in the past. Aminoguanidine was shown in this study particularly to partially protect cells from TAGE-induced damage. Much more promise provided. Now, in future episodes, we'll explore dietary strategies to limit age intake more carefully and also investigate therapeutic agents like aminoguanidine and others that can be used in blocking rage activation 
or scavenging Ross reactive oxygen species. Until then, remember this, our gut is not just a digestive tube. It is a highly regulated barrier that, when compromised, opens the floodgates to chronic disease. Toxic ages or tages are among the most aggressive saboteurs in this story. But understanding their mechanisms gives us the tools we need to fight back. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in today to the College of Glycation. And be sure to share this episode with anyone who wonders about gut health, metabolic integrity, or slowing down the silent march of chronic disease. Stay curious and stay metabolically aware. By understanding how ages accrue, reducing your insulin sensitivity along the way so you can't control blood sugar as well, and how glycation hinders your normal gut health, we can gain more insight into improving our digestive system. Thanks again, one and all, for joining me today. I'll see you next time in the College of Glycation.